So welcome back to another great episode of the Black Sweet Tonight Africa Rising channel. My name is Bekwe Ben Aboman. I'm speaking to you from Nanjing, where there have been an outbreak of the COVID-19 cases once again in China. Well, researchers say it might be the deadliest outbreak. No, not deadliest. I mean, the most serious outbreak ever since 2020. Well, it's happening in several cities, over 20 cities as I speak now, super spreading the Omicron at an alarming rate. And China has begun what they call the mass testing. The whole city, well, at least they started with my district, Jianan district of Nanjing. And my whole university, the whole university with several thousands of the population has been tested. I've just returned from getting tested and it took place at dawn. And when I speak dawn, it started from around 8 p.m through to about 3 a.m. testing the whole university. And I want to bring you, yeah, already on your screen. Man, it's not been easy. It's called dynamic tolerance policy. Dynamic with zero COVID tolerance policy. The ability to deal with the outbreak, the, the ability to deal with it, with a spread just when the outbreak occurs in everywhere. And so I do believe this mass testing is happening. Well, not just in my university, but every other institution and every other residential estate that is in this particular district. I don't know about the other district. Nanjing has over 15, 20 district. Yeah. And this is the Jianan district. And man, it's not been easy. Waking up at dawn, I think I got my alarm around 1 a.m. And so I had to go and queue up. All these are people that are waiting to get tested. I mean, I'm not going to talk that much. So yeah, let us enjoy the scenes. And this will tell you about how serious it is to deal with a virus as deadliest as this very one that we are dealing with. Now, in order for China to open up, they have to really make sure that this disease is brought under control. And these are some of the measures. They get a whole school tested and then they keep isolating, isolating and retesting, isolating and retesting. And so I do believe we'll be testing again very soon. Every 48 hours, we have to join the queue to do this. And yeah, I think it's one of the, should I say the best ways to deal with a virus? You have to keep testing and keep isolating, keep testing, keep isolating. But man, it's not been easy, man. By the time I came back, my knees, my waist, my everything was hurting. But yeah, for the safety of humanity, for <sighs> better safe than sorry. So yeah, these are some of the scenes that you've seen. And one interesting thing is, one interesting thing is while the testing was going on, there was a drone moving around, making sure that everybody was in line, man. <laughs> you just can't mess it. And people were coming. Even though when we went there, we thought we were late. Man, the line wasn't easy. All these are people, university students, by the way, that are getting tested. Even professors and all, administrators and everybody has been already tested. So, well, how dare you, student? Man. So, yeah. And we just had to, you know, go get ourselves tested. And hopefully, well, since I haven't been isolated, it means technically, you know, um, I'm safe. And by the way, uh, our university is actually locked in. Yeah, we've been on lockdown, technical lockdown for about two years now in a row. Uh, if you want to go out, you need to apply for permission. And then when you are approved, then yes, then you can go outside of the gate, but you have to return that same day. And you have to actually apply within some hours. You have to go and come within that same hours. So I would say that that might be some of the reason why we are still safe. I think I haven't heard any African student, apart from the early hours of 2020 when the outbreak came, there was this Congolese guy who got covid and recovered and all that but I, 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 apart from that I, I, outside of that i haven't seen or heard i haven't seen or heard anybody uh, getting the covid i mean the african students yeah and um so it it hasn't been easy it hasn't been easy uh yeah waking up to go get tested but that's a real deal that's that's how if someone is asking how has china dealt with that virus this is it this is what you are seeing on your screen right now man if they if even there's a rumor that someone has come into contact lock the whole area down get everybody tested isolate them retest isolate retest isolate until after some several couple of days if there's no new infection or no no one showing symptoms and all that then they readjust to make sure that by still keeping those people under control i mean I think for a disease that is as communicable as this one, man, you don't want to really play with it. And someone will say, but Africans are not doing this. How, how are they surviving? Man, for us, I think those that will die have already died and those that have been immune have been immune. And yeah, there are still some people who haven't really got into their groove. You know, they have different variants and different variants deals with different people. And yeah, according to 
science, people believe that the Omicron, if you recover from the Omicron, you stand a chance of being immune to the virus. And so maybe Africans, we've been already omicron <laughs> Omicron immune. Well, apart from that, I, I still do believe, you know, these are some of the reasons why I think Africans, we are sort of some, some sort of powerful supernatural human beings that we haven't really gotten to know our growth. And well, that's all this channel is about, trying to let us know and to think ourselves as who we really are. We might be even demigods. For you know, why are we different? Everybody has different colors, but ours are that staggeringly glaring for you to behold. Yeah, that's why, you know, sometimes I'll be walking and I see a white child, he sees men, he just jumps. Yeah, I've seen a god. <laughs> oh, that's it, by the way. It was supposed to be a joke. No racism here, man. I'm not racist. I'm just being race conscious. You see that? Yeah, so, yeah, technically, um, we went, got ourselves tested. So I slept around like 4 a.m. And it's like 5 a.m. right now as I speak. Yeah. It's just my light, not not the sunlight that you'll see. So I'm shooting this at night. So technically, it's not been really easy. It's it's not been easy. It's not been easy, but um, yeah. <sighs> that's that's just the, the way to deal with it. And like I said, it's a zero. That's a zero. Zero tolerance policy. Yeah, it's a zero. Zero, zero tolerance. Policy. My name is Bakir Banan Boma. There's a Black Suit Tonight Africa Rising channel, Africa Researcher in Nanjing, China. And I bring you episode about the continent. And for some time now, we've sort of, you know, taken a break on the, yeah, episode from the continent. We'll be coming back soon. But let me just give you some tidbit about what's happening right now in China while the world is sort of, you know, opening up. There's been a new outbreak right after the uh, Olympics. And yeah, China is dealing with it by the mass testing. Yeah, processing. As we've seen on the screen, it's not been easy. I'll see you when I see you. If you're new here, subscribe and share. Stay up to date. Stay up to date with what's happening in the continent, on the continent, and the African babies in the diaspora. I'll see you when I see you.